setting up malaria vector control. Okay. Sorry. Okay, perfect. So the malaria vector control is a component the, um, of a more comprehensive uh, malaria program that can be um, carried out by the Ministry of Health on different uh, countries. In the DHIS2, in the WHO Health Data Toolkit, we actually have two different types of packages you can see. So, sorry, we have the aggregate one where you can uh, find information and key data information used on the malaria burden reduction or and elimination uh, uh, strategies. The surveillance part, so two different tracker programs supporting case notification, case investigation, FOSI investigation, classification uh, workflow, uh, workflow, sorry. And then the logistic part, so supply chain readiness and trustability of malaria drugs test uh, and uh, long lasting uh, incentive side and down to point of service delivery. As well, very soon, uh, three different packages will come and uh, specifically on the vector control part. So the breeding sites monitoring um, will be a tracker program, the indoor residual spraying as uh, an event and insecticide treated nets as event as well. So this will come in soon on the June release. So what we are going to talk uh, about today, so is the in innovative use of DHS2 for malaria vector control intervention that is shared from malaria endemic countries. So we'll have uh, experience for different countries uh, alongside lesson learning implementation, country customization, and data use. So we will have three different examples. So the DHS2 Android application has been used to scale up entomological monitoring data collection in Ghana, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and Mali, and to optimize. Uh, in the case of uh, um, Zimbabwe, so uh, to, to optimize uh, the uh, URS campaign performance. And as well, Tanzania will share, uh, the East Tanzania will share its experience uh, using the HS2 dashboard to integrate logistic and health service delivery data to optimize continued distribution of uh, uh, long lasting insecticide nets to pregnant women and children under five. So I don't want to take more time just introduce uh, the first speaker, Otias. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Stefano, for the introduction the presentation can you hear me well okay thank you so i'm going to make a presentation on a zimbabwe case study i am otia staff money the responsible for data management within the national malaria control program um, funded by global fund mostly that's where we get most of our funding from so as a country Zimbabwe is in Southern Africa. This is just a, an introductory part. It's in Southern Africa, um, close to South Africa, Botswana, Malawi, and Mozambique, for those who might actually need to know the place. So that's the country in green, for those who are actually seeing. Uh, that's Zimbabwe. So our aim or objective was to integrate indoor residual spraying, that is IRS reporting, into, into, the, into the DHIS2 and improve quality and data availability for decision making. So basically, generally, initially, as a country, we, we had a challenge in terms of, um, of uh, accessing our data. So we had to opt to use DHIS2 as our, as our source or as our data storehouse, since we are mostly relying on the paper-based system. Therefore, we had to make sure we integrate it into DHIS2 for easy, easy accessibility and also for decision making by the, by the decision makers. Uh, in terms of the description, uh, use of DHIS2 system for indoor indo residual spray, that's what we actually targeted to do. And in terms of the platform that we used, we, we had to use a DHIS2 web-based, web which is Android. Uh, the version that we used uh, is 2.356. I think as a country, this should be the first country which has done that. 
So we started this in 2020 as a pilot in one of our provinces, and uh, it had about nine nine uh, districts. So those nine districts started to report using the DHIS2. Uh, then we had to scale it up uh, in 2021 to 30 more districts. So these are high burden districts that has got uh, an incidence rate of five and above per thousand population. So generally, in terms of our data, it, it, it's reported as aggregate, meaning to say it's not tracked per, 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 per entity, but it's, it's consolidated for the district. Uh, the intervention that we're actually focusing on is indoor, indoor, indoor residual spraying. Uh, in terms of the indicators that we're actually tracking, they also included population projected, thus the coverages. Uh, also, we've got the room coverages. Then we're also even looking at the spray operator efficiency that we could actually follow the efficiency of each and every spray operator. Then um, spray operator commodities management, which include fuel, insect size, and other things that could actually be tracked. So DHIS2 uh, was introduced to, 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 to improve our reporting since we're actually uh, uh, relying on the paper-based system. So we had to introduce the electronic platform so as to enhance uh, better reporting for the country. So previously we used to rely on the Excel uh, WhatsApp at times to, 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 to reporting data. Then uh, after that, you had to consolidate to come up with the report of which it was actually a bit of a challenge. But with the digitization now, uh, it was actually easy for us as a country to, to improve in terms of our reporting. This is that's the Excel part of it, which we used to try and, uh, and actually consolidate our data that was reported by districts. So as you can actually see, you had to put some formulas and so forth so that you could actually uh, give a better insight in terms of what they've been reported. But with the coming in of DHIS2 now, we had to, we, we, we improved in terms of the quality of data that was being reported by the districts. So this is one of the examples of what could be produced through the electronic platform that we use, that's the DHIS2. Uh, in terms of the completeness, those who are reporting the data on a weekly basis, but for those who are submitting the data from the district, it was being reported on a daily basis, meaning to say on, on each and every day, we're getting updates that were coming from the districts. Therefore, in terms of decision making and uh, for management, it was easy to make decisions based on the data that is submitted on a daily basis. Therefore, in terms of planning and other things, you could actually rely on the data that was reported on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis would also come up with the reports uh, which could be used uh, by the districts, by national level, by the province, they would rely on the reports that we're actually producing. So this is the architecture in terms of the design and in terms of how the data flowed from the first from the campsites through to the national or the central server. So basically, uh, we have uh, the spray operator who is the one who is responsible in terms of making sure they collect the data as they spray the rooms. So during the process, as they, as, as they collect the data, they will be having what to call the spray operator notebooks. That's the one that they were actually collecting the data through. Then from there, they would go to the data manager or the DAO who is responsible, who is responsible for consolidating at the end of the day. So each spray operator would submit data to the data manager at the campsite. Then the data manager would consolidate, then capture in the DHIS2 tracker capture. From there, the data manager would submit the data to the central server, whereby all those who have got the access rights at district level, that is at national level, at provincial level, from there they could actually make decisions based on the data that is submitted. So in terms of consolidating and submission, it was done on a daily basis and would expect those reports every day. 
that is for the period that we're doing the spray. Meaning to say, in terms of for support and supervision and core banks, you would actually rely on the data that is submitted on a daily basis. Therefore, what it means is for each and every action that was being taken, it was based on data that has been submitted. If, for example, uh, the targeted population or the targeted rooms to be sprayed is 2,000, and they would spray, let's say, 500 or 700 or 1,000, and the other 1,000 is not sprayed, a core bay could be required. This would be determined by the data that would be submitted, because already for each word, you'd be having the targets already set in the system of which that would determine in terms of your performance. Therefore, the data that would have been submitted to actually determine sh should we uh, have a core back or not, meaning to say our coverages would definitely improve. Therefore, uh, in terms of uh, the core backs that, would, that, that were being done, they actually improved in terms of the number of rooms sprayed and even in terms of the population protected for each ward. And also, again, they would also determine, uh, the, the, the data would also determine in terms of where should actually support go or supervision should be done. And even again, in terms of resources, you could actually see uh, the, the fuel that has been consumed, the, the, the mileages that have been traveled, and in terms of uh, logistically, you could actually rely on the data that was being collected and submitted through the cent to the central server. Then even again, in terms of feedback, we also, try to make sure the reports that we produced would send them back again to the districts and also to the province so that the managers would want to make decisions, would actually rely on the data that is being collected or submitted through to, through DHIS2 uh, so that they could actually easily make decisions based on the data that is collected, of which that was one of the greatest strengths that I would say uh, the digitization of IRS in Zimbabwe actually helped us a lot in terms of improving the quality of spray and even also the quality of management and also even the quality of resource resource utilization of which that was actually a, 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 an advantage to the country. In terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the quality or the, the, the performance that, 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 that would get at the end of the day, these are some of the results which you actually try to automate. These were the dashboards that you're actually using. Uh, the greens, that's where we're actually having a good uh, IRS coverages. The yellow, that's where we would have a low IRS coverage. So in terms of decision making, it was actually easy to say, where should we put more resources or where should we put more support? Which districts would require more support? Then even in terms of performance, you could actually see where you've got a uh, population protected that, 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 that was low or where it was actually high. Then you also have got the, 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 the dashboard again in terms of the impact. That's for the targets with rooms protected or a uh, room sprayed population protected. It was actually easy through the dashboards you could see on a daily basis. So it improved in terms of how we do things or in terms of how we're actually analyzing our data because it was done on a daily basis. So those who did fail to report, you could actually easily uh, follow up to see if they could actually submit their data. Uh, I'm actually being told my time is actually uh, uh, up. Then in terms of the benefits, one of the benefits was actually increased data completeness and timeliness resulting in better visibility by management and, and uh, by, 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 the, by, by those who are responsible for, 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 for vector control. Then improved the data quality is one of the greatest advantages. Then also, again, there was also capacity building within the districts and even at MHCC. Then in-country technical capacity and support in in country capacity in terms of uh, of using the DHIS two and also in terms of customization and, ev and everything else, it was done locally. There was no external support that was actually sourced. Then one of the challenges in terms of the, using the system, of course, as we know, most of our African countries we've got challenges in terms of internet connectivity. So uh, it it didn't spare us as a country. Also, then the other issue was also to do with the staff rotation. Then in terms of the future plans as a country, we're actually looking forward to take advantage of the digitization that, was, that we have already done. So 
we are going to tap in in terms of the experiences other countries have gone through in terms of digitizing most of their reporting. Therefore, as a country, we're also even looking forward to, to include the endomology, endo, endomological data. Then we're also looking forward to also include the lens long lasting nets data into DHIS2. I hope I'm still within the time frame. Thank you so much. Uh, but I was too having a lot to say, but due to time, I've tried to compress so that it fits within my time frame. Thank you so much. Back to you, Stefan. So, thank you very much, Sophia. The next presentation, we will have a presentation from uh, Marianne about the scaling up of the DHIS to Android capture uh, application for entomological data before the current Thank you, Stefano. Hey, so we're moving from IRS to entomological data. I will be talking about how we used, can everyone hear me all right? Okay, how we've used Android Capture App to collect entomological data in four countries. I am a monitoring and evaluation specialist for Apt Associates, and um, I work with the U.S. President's Malaria Initiative funded project, PMI Vectorlink. In the, in the project, we work in 25 countries. We have three main aims. We equip countries to, um, to have a plan for vector control interventions, which include um, bed net distribution and indoor residual spray campaigns. And then we also conduct robust entomological monitoring. So what is the mosquito doing? Is it transmitting malaria? And then um, all of that with the main goal to um, build capacity in how to use all of that data. Um, among the, the countries, we use a global DHIS2 dashboard called Vectorlink Collect. In 2018, we started using, uh, we built an event program for indoor residual spray data. We're now up to 17 countries. And then a year later, we rolled out five event entomological programs. Um, for in now we're up to 19 countries. In both of these data sets, we use mobile data collection and paper uh, data collection. For IRS, we use ODK. And for entomological data, we use um, the DHIS2 Android capture. So some of the things we had to think about when we were considering mobile as a solution for entomological data. It's super technical. We, I work with PhD people all the time now, and it's, it requires the actual data collector to know WHO recommended and um, SOPs to be able to effectively collect the data onto the, onto the phone. It's also, we have five different programs. Each program has very distinct data workflows. So some, is, some data is collected hourly, some data is collected monthly, some annually, and all of them require multiple data point, points of collection and different people at different physical locations. Um, we also, each country, as we all know, this is very different. So there are different security, concerns or internet connectivity concerns to take into account when you're planning out a mobile, uh, mobile data collection system. Um, and then also a lot of the Sentinel sites, so where the actual mosquitoes are collected, can be super rural. So we have to be able to have the capacity to collect data offline. So we, because we had in-house experience with ODK, we did do a landscape assessment of, of other um, softwares, but uh, we primarily compared DHIS2, Android Capture, and ODK as our two main solutions. Um, primarily, the, the biggest advantage was that we wouldn't have to recreate our, our programs onto the phones um, if we use the DHIS2, Android Capture, as well as we have the ability to sync automatically into the system without using an ETL, which has proved to be challenging in the past. Um, we do, we are using 2.4.3 right now. We're hoping to um, upgrade in the near future. Um, these are some of the other criteria we took into account. It wasn't everything. It was a very comprehensive list, but these were some of the things that we considered essential for uh, mobile data collection. 
So last year we did, we piloted um, DHIS2 Android Capture in Ghana. We did a very comprehensive, well-documented pilot of three phases um, going through all the programs. And based on the successes and, and lessons learned in Ghana, we moved pretty rapidly into um, Nigeria starting of March of this year, and then Cote d'Ivoire and Mali. Nigeria was one of our uh, newest country add-ons into our system. So they went straight into mobile. They never had to do paper data collection. Cote d'Ivoire um, did the full transition from paper to mobile. And then in Mali, they've done a smaller rollout. So we've been able to really have great success in rolling out the, the application. And we are confident we can move forward with several other countries. So now we'll go through the four countries in a little bit more detail, just highlighting some um, lessons learned that we've had. In Ghana, um, we did have existing, um, we had in-house experience with mobile data collection. Um, so it was fairly easy to roll it out in Ghana. Um, we did discover that uh, users have the ability to edit categories in using the DHIS2 Android application. Um, our event programs have a lot of categories. And so this discovery actually made our database manager's life a lot easier in terms of data quality management um, because they are able to use the phones to um, catch those errors sooner in the data workflow. Because Ghana was the first country that we introduced mobile, we've actually already seen improvements in um, terms of teams efficiency. They're able to decentralize their mosquito selection. So now um, within two hours of synchronization, the database manager can see which mosquitoes have been collected, communicate with the entomologist, and then disperse information back to the Sentinel site teams and tell them this is the mosquitoes that need to be processed for molecular uh, analysis. And they all love mosquitoes. I just saw this process like not too long ago. It is infection, infectious, the passion that entomologists have for mosquitoes. So it was a lot of fun to see. Um, so then we moved on to Nigeria. And with Nigeria, we learned really about how unique each country is. So the process of mapping out your workflow is should be one of you should spend a lot of time on this process so we have uh, developed some tools that help us facilitate what questions to ask our teams to really understand okay where does the mobile phone need to be if this person needs to collect this information and then sync it at this point for technical review so it's a very we're lucky that we work directly with the field team so they know the reality of what happens in the field um, and they can inform us okay this is what happens here so then we can say okay well then the phone needs to be in this location or transferred one of the things that has helped us greatly to be able to mold this mold, to roll this out in different countries is the ability to edit, edit, open and edit saved and synced events. So one thing that DHIS2 Android Capture offers is this ability to sync at multiple times. So there it minimizes your data loss. Um, this is not something that's available with ODK because of the, the ETL. Um, so we're able to have multiple points of syncing to save data, but then also, also multiple points of um, technical review of the data. So with Cote d'Ivoire, we recognized some connectivity issues um, that made it necessary to do a more comprehensive connectivity assessment in all of the sites. Um, this uh, really pushed us to look more into what happens when we restrict the programs per device and what happens when we restrict the organization units per device, minimizing the metadata that's needed to be synced on each device actually lowers the, uh, the need to have fast internet and can greatly improve the ability of the user to, um, to make configuration differences on their device. All right, and then Molly, last one is when we really recognize the need to have hands on multiple practical training sessions. One of the um, 
The interesting takeaways was that the field technicians were afraid that by using the mobile device, all of a sudden they were gonna be collecting different information. And so it was necessary for them to see, okay, here's a paper form. It's gonna be the same information collected on the, on the tablet or the smartphone. Um, and having them get really used to all the validations because yes, they know maybe the SOP, but they don't know like maximum number of mosquitoes that can be collected, you know, at a certain point. Whereas the person entering the paper entry, the paper data collection into the browser would know that really well. So it was repeating this in the office and then repeating it in the field really helped roll out uh, mobile. Some challenges that we've had. Um, so one of the things that we're working on is ideally we would want for a supervisor to go into the field and use their device and open up whatever event to be able to, to review the data. Um, right now, we're not able to pull up events on multiple different devices. Um, working theory right now is that we have so many categories that might be inhibiting this action. Um, and then we also were not able to um, start with the 2.5 version of the, of the application at the beginning of this year, because we do have one of our programs has about 1400 data elements. Um, so it was causing delays in terms of data registration when they were going through the program. So we've, that's why we opted for 2.4.3. And then um, some of the, some of the successes or the reasons why it's been such a success. Um, we've really been able to streamline the, the data workflow across all these five um, distinct workflows. Um, it's, you know, it's increasing the availability of data in, in our system. Um, let me go through all of these here. Here we go. Um, and it goes straight into our dashboards. So our dashboards are, are pretty, pretty standard right now. So people are very used to how the data works um, in the, how it looks in the system. Uh, and so there, there we have tech uh, entomologists that are able to review the dashboards um, and make ad hoc uh, recommendations to the National Malaria Control Programs and getting this data faster and cleaner into the system allows them to do that. And then I think this is my last slide. I just wanted to round it out with giving maybe uh, the, the audience <laughs> a little bit of info of, of why we use entomological data because maybe not everyone knows, um, but we do a lot of data collection on what does the mosquito do? How does it behave and at what hour of the day? Um, and this informs, all this informs how to make vector control, control decisions in the country. Um, we also collect data on resistance. So if there's resistance in a certain area, does that insecticide need to be uh, rotated out into um, a, different, a different type of insecticide um, or in a different location? Um, and then all of that, we also monitor um, whether vector control interventions actually reach the, the, the demographic area, demographic people, population, targeted population. Um, so all of this informs national malaria control programs in deciding what is the best vector control decision for a certain location and a given in a certain time and taking seasonality into account. And all of this is available on our dashboards. Um, we do share regularly with uh, PMI national malaria control programs um, as data is cleaned and ready for, for use. Thank you. Ismail uh, from the East Tanzania going to talk uh, going to speak a little bit about the integrated long lasting insecticide bed nets accountability dashboard. Dashboard is going to integrate logistic and health service delivery data to optimize continuous distribution of all long lasting insecticide bed nets through antenatal care and immunization. Thank you, Stefano. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as introduced, um, 
I am Ismail Koleni uh, from East Tanzania. Um, I'm going to be talking about more on the data use uh, side of things um, um, as far as the um, LLIN uh, distribution uh, is concerned in, in Tanzania. So um, HIST Tanzania has been working with uh, 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 Tanzania Vectical Control Activity. Uh, this is a PMI uh, USAID funded um, uh, project, which um, is mainly targeting to improve um, evidence-based uh, vector control approaches in Tanzania. So um, it focuses on a couple of things, uh, but for the purpose of this presentation, I'm gonna be talking more about the insecticides treated nets, um, ITNs. Uh, so this activity covers both uh, Tanzania uh, mainland and Zanzibar. Um, so it involves working uh, very closely with the uh, uh, government um, and all the implementation is done through the National Malaria Control Program for the case of mainland and uh, Zanzibar elimination, uh, malaria elimination program, um, um, because these two uh, parts of the country are in different stages of malaria um, uh, control. Um, so for the purpose of um, distribution of ITNs, um, the, the target or the focus is um, to pregnant women who are attending um, um, the ANC first visit. Uh, so that's one of the core first distribution area. Um, and then uh, the second one is the um, um, for children who are receiving measles uh, one uh, dose of vaccination. Um, and then the third is uh, community distribution, which is done through coupons and uh, they, they, they go to uh, the health facility to receive the, um, um, the alliance. Um, and of course on demand, um, um, there is uh, some campaigns which are done from here and there, um, depending on the needs and uh, on, on specific interventions in different areas. Um, so, all of this data uh, across distribution, uh, all the data is uh, collected and managed through different um, 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 systems um, uh, by the government. Um, the core one is DHIS2. Uh, so there is HMIS, which collects data, all the service delivery data. And part of the data that is being corrected um, at these two uh, programs, um, um, they also collect uh, the distribution or uh, the services um, as far as the ITN is concerned. Um, so we have supported building up this uh, dashboard mainly to um, um, focus on the, um, um, again, as the keyword is evidence-based uh, decision-making is to focus on providing the necessary information so that they can be able to act or to uh, perform different and monitor the performance of the program um, across the board. Um, but also the, another keyword is accountability. Uh, from the previous implementation, there was a lot of um, um, uh, bed nets being lost and you would find them being sold in the, in the, in the uh, shops. Um, so one of the key also uh, focus as part of the design of this dashboard is to make sure that uh, it, it focuses on uh, transparency and accountability so that um, uh, you can easily be able to detect whenever there is lost or potential uh, theft of uh, bed nets um, and they end up being sold in the market um, from the private sector. Um, uh, another key uh, crucial uh, component as far as this dashboard is concerned is it combines data from two main data sources. So the HMIS uh, service delivery data, um, uh, which is already in DHIS2, um, um, but also uh, logistics data, which is um, um, from LMIS system. And this is based on an open, uh, uh, open LMIS. Uh, in Tanzania, we call it ELMIS a platform, which is not DHIS2. So we managed to do this by uh, um, having the two systems, DHIS2 and, uh, and EL ELMIS interoperable. Uh, but of course, all the data analysis, visualizations, and all the outputs as far as this dashboard is concerned are done and accessed through uh, DHIS2 dashboard interface. Um, so again, um, the key uh, aspect of um, this dashboard is to be able to support the uh, program uh, implementation and uh, performance monitoring. Um, um, and this is uh, of course, giving access to the required data to different levels. Um, as you know, the program is implemented uh, by different levels and each level looks at different levels of data. Uh, so the district level would have uh, some specific uh, information which targets um, um, 
um, them, but also um, uh, it goes higher level up all the way up to the national uh, uh, program. And of course, um, uh, there's a lot of data driven uh, action, decision making and, and strategies uh, across the way. Um, so this is one of the example of the visualization which shows um, the trend of distribution of bed nets over different months. Uh, so the blue bar is the um, ANC visits um, uh, for that particular month, and the red bar is the ANC visits that were actually received um, 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 L Alliance. And then the green line is more um, of the expected number of pregnancies, which is derived from the population. So you can clearly see that from the ANC distribution point, the bars are pretty close uh, to each other. But uh, on the other hand, this is another chart which looks at the another level of distribution point, which is distribution through um, uh, measles one vaccination. And here you will see the gap is a little bit uh, higher, um, meaning that there is a lot of children who are actually vaccinated and they're supposed to uh, receive um, uh, bed nets, but they don't actually uh, do that. So this is one of the things that um, through the use of this dashboard, it was kind of noticed. This is the uh, one of the districts, uh, but if you go to the high level, uh, national level, you see the actually gap is quite high. So the National uh, uh, Malaria Control Program had to find the best strategies to actually intervene and make sure that uh, the children are also receiving um, 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 L Alliance. And you can clearly see of recent months, uh, this gap has been slowly reducing over time. So this shows how also the use of dashboard can actually um, um, make the, the, the program managers, the implementers re-strategize and over time, um, you cannot expect in one month the gap to be clear, but you can clearly see over time that the gap, gap closes and hopefully soon um, uh, it will be at the same part as um, 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 ANC uh, distribution point. Um, um, as I said earlier on, um, one of the key uh, interesting functionality is it, it also provides an opportunity for the uh, system or program users to triangulate data across two different data sources. That is HMIS service delivery based data, but logistics data, which is coming from another system. Um, um, and uh, there are a couple of visualizations that we made uh, that to compare, but one interesting uh, one is this one. So this looks, uh, it's a scorecard manner, uh, but it, kind of compares and, 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 and calculates the difference. And actually there are some color coding um, and this helps uh, the, the, the program to, uh, by the use of colors, of course, uh, like red, uh, and then they can prioritize. Um, uh, it means that there's a big gap between um, what is shown on the LMIS vis-a-vis -vis what is um, um, shown on, um, on HMIS and that triggers uh, a, a, a question of why, because ideally if you provide of the facility distribute um, uh, 20 um, um, uh, LLINs in a month to maybe 20 uh, pregnant women and then the logistics, uh, the stock status and, and the data should show the same. So through the triangulation of this kind of data and then it also uh, um, are able to provide um, opportunity for the program people to pick up these triggers and actually either give feedback um, um, or intervene uh, because it, it's also a potential that uh, there could be uh, some some um, leakages of, of um, um, LLIN over time. And of course, the last column, which is uh, blue, this is a month of stock. It's more of a um, um, logistics based indicator, which predicts how many months uh, the facility would be able to last uh, with, with that stock that they have. Um, yeah, so this is also a bar graph, which uh, kinds of compare. Um, um, again, the, the, the distribution of um, uh, LLIN from, um, from HMIS source um, and then from logistics source. You can see there are some months that uh, they are very close to each other, uh, but you can also identify that there are some months which they, there is a big gap. Uh, so this also, um, uh, because again, uh, ideally this these numbers should uh, match very closely to each other. Of course, we do understand that there are some some data quality issues that can um, um, lead into into discrepancies. Uh, but this kind of very high discrepancies raises a lot of questions that uh, the program people will need to find ways to identify what is the problem and, and, and actually act on them. Um, yeah, so challenges, uh, part of the experiences or challenges, um, they, they are quite diverse. Um, 
um, amount of challenges. Uh, the biggest one has been through the interoperability process. Um, um, and, and it's because of the mismatch of uh, reporting uh, period. So ELMIS is designed and, and, and done in Tanzania um, on a quarterly basis. Uh, currently it's in the transition to uh, from quarterly to bi-monthly um, and the HMIS based service delivery data is monthly. So now you're kind of looking at data, um, um, monthly level data versus the quarterly level data. Um, so that's one of the biggest challenges that um, are really um, uh, um, lead into, into um, some gaps in terms of the use of the data. Another challenge is um, um, maintaining the interoperability. Um, um, as these two systems are supported, implemented by two different um, 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 departments within the Ministry of Health, but also two different technical teams, often uh, the interoperability breaks. Um, um, and at the end of the day, DHIS2 has a receiving end and at the dashboard as the program people uses the dashboard, there is quite a lot of gap in terms of the data is not coming as expected um, for, for so many reasons. It could be some upgrades here and there, changes in, in the systems across uh, each other. And uh, oftentimes, um, 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 some some aspects that are uh, happening in either of the system, and they do, they do not inform uh, the other one. And then, of course, one of the other biggest challenges is data quality issues. Um, um, still, this is a, a very cross-cutting generic problem, not only for malaria or LLN, but it's still um, um, causing a lot of challenges as far as the use of data because you would set up these triggers and, 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 and color coding, but you get reds and you realize that it's a lot of uh, data quality issues. And of course, there is still some um, um, distribution of um, um, bed nets that are happening um, from non-facility based um, in, other, in other distribution points. And this data is not properly recorded within the health facility system. And that again causes um, a little bit of leakages as far as when you're looking at the holistic distribution um, um, information. So uh, thank you very much. I hope I am um, on time and I'll pause from here. Thank you. So thank you very much, Ismaila. In reality, we are very on time, with 4.20. So just a logistical information. Uh, there will be from 4.30 the expert launch, just here where there was the pizza yesterday. And if there is any burning question, uh, maybe we could take advantage of two minutes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we repeat the question for the ones online. Okay. So I was asking if uh, the data from the from a, a massive um, distribution was always also captured as well on this dashboard or not? No, no, they respond to this. Uh, thank you. So yes, the system design um, massive mass distribution uh, or um, any of the community distribution uh, is supposed to be done um, um, and the data is supposed to be collected by specific facility because at the end of the day uh, the health workers that are distributing these um, LLINs are actually coming from the facility so there is a like by system design it's supposed to be captured under the community uh, distribution uh, within the health facility but in reality that does not happen it's very uh, controlled within uh, the facility, but once they go out and then they would hand over the, uh, the, uh, the, the nets and they don't uh, report back to the facility. So that's the challenge. But yeah, it's more of an operational issue than, than the system design, but yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So now we run out of time. In case you have any other question, please, you can write on the community of practice and for the ones on lives, if you have any questions, you can just catch our presenter in the, in the coming hours, coming days. Thank you very much.